Here are four things that will destroy your vehicle's value, and honestly, to a certain extent, they may very well damage the vehicle itself. Welcome back guys, or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous, and today I want to share four things that can be seriously bad for your vehicle. They will likely decrease its value substantially, make it more difficult to sell, and also potentially give you a worse ownership experience in the meantime. But the good news is, they're all a choice. They're not very reversible, but they are a choice, so there's good news. Just avoid these four things. The first point is smoking. And no, my purpose for this video is not to get after you if you are part of the population who does smoke, because we all have our vices. I'm just asking that you consider not smoking in your car. Not only does it ruin the interior and have a lingering smoky smell, even if your car is smoking hot, but it decreases the value by at least 8%. And more importantly, it decreases the population that someday might be interested in buying your car by as much as 90%, because 90% of the population in America does not smoke. So that means you're left with only potentially 10% of the population who might be considering buying your car. And at that, you know that they're going to want to discount at least that 8%, because otherwise, why would anyone pay the same amount for a car that smells like smoke compared to one that doesn't? And that's really a tough one because myself personally, someone who does not smoke, I would never consider buying a car that does smell or have the hint of smoke unless it was going to be a project car and I was planning to gut the interior anyways. I would have no purpose in really checking it out. And once I smelled that, I'd probably just walk away from the deal. Depending on the severity of it, you may or may not have health concerns related to the secondhand smoke exposure. But keep in mind that your passengers are probably not going to want or enjoy riding with you if they're not used to the smoke. They might not tell you that straight up to your face, but they're probably going to be thinking it the whole time, and then it'll be more difficult to sell the vehicle later. Because the smoke particles are so small, they really seep in and kind of get held onto by the cloth seats you may have, or just the cloth materials in general throughout your car, the headliner, all the things. And depending on how sensitive your olfactory ability of your nose are, it can honestly be pretty difficult to completely get the smell out. Although there are new technologies like ozone generators that break down the smoke particles and obviously professional detailers using those or other methods, it's honestly a gamble in my opinion and it's not one that I would want to take. The second thing is your maintenance schedule. So things like your oils, your filters, your fluids, your lubricants, and all of that basic stuff, especially if you have a turbo model, kind of like my Subaru Outback Wilderness here, with the turbo, the oil heats up more and it denatures more quickly, so you really want to stay on top of what you're doing for maintenance. A lot of vehicles now have either an app from the manufacturer where you can keep track of this, or sometimes even in their own infotainment system. So whether you have the dealership or an independent shop working on your car, or you're doing it yourself, if you're doing it yourself, definitely keep a receipt trail and a maintenance log. So if you ever have a warranty claim, you can take advantage of no, you did not neglect it, you actually did take care of it. And these are the dates, these are the things that you applied to it. And I think that's especially important because down the road, if you do happen to sell your car, whoever the future owner is, they're probably gonna appreciate a well-detailed maintenance log. But also if an equivalent car goes through dealerships to be serviced rather than you doing the maintenance yourself, those end up on Carfax. So people have a legit record there. So if they're looking at two different cars online to potentially buy one of them, and one has a very detailed service record that shows services every few months, and the other one also had the same quality of work done, but it doesn't show, it's gonna hurt you. So either have a physical paper trail that you can report that and advertise that in the vehicle's ad, or have it go through the dealership or whoever you use, someone that can report that to Carfax. So either way, it's covered and it looks like your vehicle has been well maintained and well cared for. And this is just a side note, but if you leave for work early in the morning when it's cold out or you live in a colder climate, I would especially then consider letting your vehicle idle for maybe one to two minutes in the driveway before you drive off, just so that the engine block isn't quite as cold, the oil isn't quite as cold, and you give it just a moment or two to warm up a little bit more before you start to drive. Your vehicle and your engine is gonna warm up much faster under actual load through the drivetrain, not just sitting in park idling, but still, I always do that. I think it's wise to just give it a minute or two to help it have a little bit more of a chance before you take off driving. And then I personally try to rev it below 2,500 RPM until the vehicle's up to operating temperature, just so that I don't feel like I'm giving it any unnecessary stress and making it work any harder than it has to. The third thing is washing your car and keeping it clean. That's not just for the paint's protection, but also for the underbody, such as the frame or the subframes, and any other materials and anything else that salt and gunk can build up on and damage your vehicle in the long run. 
between the salt and the winters, if your state has salt, bugs in the summer, and bird poop year-round, there's many natural incidences that can damage your car's paint. And car washes seriously must make so much money because there's more of those than there are McDonald's and Starbucks combined in my area, and I think that's saying something. But there are two main kinds of car washes. There are the chemical touchless ones and the soft cloth, and I think each one has their own pros and cons. The soft cloth ones are actually pretty cool because they do a better job of cleaning your vehicle, getting the dirt and the debris off, and even reaching some of those hard to wash places and just physically rubbing the dirt off. The problem is, depending on the style of your vehicle, the style of the car wash, it can add a lot of pressure to your vehicle. It can sometimes cause scratching to the clear coat or swirling. And the thing is, if the vehicle's not fully immersed in water, if the car wash didn't do a good job of getting your vehicle all the way soapy and wet first, then yeah, those cloth strips, especially if they're not well maintained and they're not changed out frequently enough, they could cause a little bit of scratching to your vehicle, although eliminating more dirt in the process. And the touchless ones are a little bit better for the, the maker, the owner, because they are more efficient. They don't waste as much water in general, it seems like. But the thing is, they can use harsher chemicals. So not only are they not cleaning the vehicle as well because it can't rub in some of those hard to reach places and it doesn't have the physical pressure compared to, you know, whatever PSI the jets are set at, but you also are gonna have harder chemicals. So that equally could be potentially damaging to your clear coat. Or you can always wash it yourself, either with the two bucket method, or maybe you wanna go buy a power washer and a foam cannon and have some fun with it. Also, the power washer is great for cleaning off the siding of your house, so it could be an excuse to splurge in that area if you want. But either way, it's just important that you are washing your vehicle regularly, and especially when you go to trade it in, because if it's shiny, if it's looking sharp, it might get you a few hundred bucks extra. And if you do wanna wash your car yourself, before you start rubbing all over that thing, you probably wanna check out some professional detailers YouTube videos to make sure that you have the right method, the right supplies, and for the right technique that you wanna use on it. But in general, washing it yourself, you wanna to go top to bottom and front to back so that you're not rubbing dirt in all the wrong areas. And then you typically wanna go the lengthwise, the long way of the vehicle from front to back so that you're not perpendicularly rubbing up and down on the vehicle because if you scratch it up and down perpendicular to the length of the vehicle, it's gonna show a lot worse than it otherwise would. The fourth and final point of today's video is modifications. I love mods as much as the next car enthusiast, and I've done quite a few myself, including adding a roll bar to my Miata last year, to supercharging my first car back in high school, to a few other things, but mods almost never add any actual value to your car unless you find the perfectly same like-minded person who wants exactly what you've done and trusts your installment. One of the most fun things about vehicle ownership is that you get to customize it, if you so choose, and you can make it yours. But keep in mind that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and what you think is awesome, someone else might think is awful or wretched, and therefore, a kind, kind of like the smoking issue in the beginning, they might not even consider buying your vehicle. On various car forums, I have seriously read so many comments of people deciding to ultimately make their vehicle go back to stock before they sell it, because they just couldn't get the value out of it that they were hoping for, and especially when there's a lot of sentimental attachment. You might as well make it stock, sell those parts for half price, and then get the full, you know, whatever your vehicle's worth in the market. And again, I love modifications. I love seeing the creativity that people can express through their car for what their personality is like. But if you haven't paid off your vehicle, or you don't think you're gonna keep it long term, maybe refrain from doing some of those crazy modifications that are irreversible at least until you decide, again, how long you're gonna keep it for and if it's paid off or not. So wheels, lifts, lowering kits, bumpers, engine programming, or physical powertrain modifications, they all count as modifications. Even those silly little K&N stickers that you put on your back window because the guy at AutoZone told you they were good for five horsepower with a street cred, those come off pretty easily too, with a blow dryer in a couple minutes max. Same with any other badges or stickers that you might want to get off that have basic adhesives, like the ones that the dealerships usually stick all over your vehicle when you buy it from them, whether new or used. Anyways, guys, if you liked this video or you found it helpful in any way, please consider liking my video. Subscribe if you haven't already and if you want to watch more stuff, and comment your thoughts and opinions down below, and include what you agree with or disagree with from my video, or if you have a different list altogether, I want to hear it. I try to read every single comment, I know a lot of other people read your comments as well, and until next time, take care.